Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin, and welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And I'm back in the Cavalcade Cookbook Library for uh, another look at a classic uh, cookbook that has influenced uh, a lot of people and made its mark. And I had a number of requests for this, and today we're going to talk about the American woman's cookbook and um, this cookbook has an interesting history it actually goes back uh, to the 1860s so there was a magazine in New York called the delineator and it published recipes and it had quite a collection of them well, a publisher in Chicago ended up buying the recipe archive from the Delinear um, magazine. And that was the beginning of sort of these recipes coming together under the umbrella of something called the Culinary Arts Institute. So, um, here is a cookbook from 1930 called New Delineator Recipes. So this is a compilation of recipes that appeared in the magazine and um, the from the Delineator Home Institute. Anyways, so this is 1930. Uh, so this is sort of the precursor of what would become the American Woman's Cookbook. So the first edition of the American Woman's Cookbook was published in 1938. Now I don't have a version that goes back that far the oldest version I have is this one, and this is from 1942. And they were relatively, um, I'm sure this had a jacket at some point. Uh, it's long gone. And frankly, it's very, a very worn cookbook. So uh, there was a woman, her name was Ruth Berlsheimer. And Ruth Berls, Berlsheimer uh, was born in Missouri in 1886 and she attended the University of Illinois at Champaign and she graduated with a degree in chemistry. She was only the second woman in the history of that institution at the time in 1908 to graduate with a chemistry degree. And Ruth Berlsheimer ended up going to New York. She was very interested in social work and then began a journey looking at how nutrition and proper eating contributed to the betterment of one's life situation. So she pursued that line of work, moved to New York, ended up becoming an editor at Good Eating Magazine in New York. And then somehow in the 1930s, she came to Chicago, back to Illinois, and she met the person who was a publisher, and he was in the publishing business, who had had bought all these recipes from the Delineator Archive. And somehow the Culinary Arts Institute was born, and Ruth uh, Berlsheimer was its executive director. So the Culinary Arts Institute um, was in Chicago. It was not a place like 
we talked about Fanny Farmer and the Boston Cooking School. That was actually a school where people went and learned how to cook and they learned about nutrition. The Culinary Arts Institute was not that. It was really a test kitchen. And the history on the Culinary Arts Institute is a little sketchy. It's a little hard to put together. Um, there were, they had a number of addresses in Chicago over the years, which were test kitchens. They did employ uh, home economists to test recipes. And anyways, they had this enormous archive of recipes uh, f that began with the ones from Delineator magazine. And then they put more to it and ended up in 1938 publishing the American Woman's Cookbook had, has over 10,000 recipes in one volume. Pretty impressive. I mean, just in terms of, you know, the number of recipes that are in it and sort of, if you can see how the pages are tabulated. So sort of an interesting first look. Later, Better Homes and Gardens and Betty Crocker were in a three ring binder, but they would have tabs so you could flip to certain um, sections of the cookbook. Well, the American Women's Cookbook, because it was so large, had that, and you know, these include, I'm looking at them, appetizer soups, breads and sandwiches, menus, food facts, fish, meat, fowl, entrees, eggs, cheese, vegetables and salads, beverages, jellies, canning, ice creams, uh, candies, desserts, cakes, cookies, so it's all in here. And whoop, uh, it was an early cookbook to have black and white and color photographs and illustrations uh, included, which was pretty cool at the time. Um, a lot of charts. These books were often used in home economics classes in, in schools. And as a matter of fact, Ruth Birlsheimer, um, rather than get a royalty on the books uh, that were sold, the American Women's Cookbooks, she instead opted to take the profits of books sold to educational institutions as texts. And I think she did quite well with that, although this book sold millions of copies over the years and was in print for decades and decades. And so uh, the American Women's Cookbook, edited by Ruth Berlsheimer, uh, her name is on the cover and on the inside of uh, the book. And so this was a book with, again, just page after page of recipes and some good explanations um, uh, in terms of how, why things work the way they work in the kitchen. So it really was a book that you could learn to cook from, which is probably why uh, it did well as a textbook for home economics. So. The hardcover, it's green, and again, this is the 1942 edition. Here is one a couple years later. This is a 1946 edition, and it is blue. And again, look at the illustrations and the photographs. I just, I just love the look of these uh, from this period. And you know, here's, oh, here's a ring mold. Doesn't that look fancy? So, uh, it even says here, this is uh, the 1946 edition, it says, edited and revised by Ruth Berlsheimer, director, Culinary Arts Institute. And then in smaller print underneath it says, from the Delineator Cookbook, 
which was edited by the Delineator Institute, uh, and Martha Van Razenlaar and Flora Rose Directors, College of Home Economics, Cornell University. So, it had an academic component, home economists from Cornell had a hand in putting this together and obviously with the idea I think that it could be used as a textbook and then you had Ruth who was the director of the Culinary Arts Institute again not a cooking school uh, but really rather more a test kitchen and as a matter of fact in a Chicago newspaper uh, some years ago, about 20 years ago or so, they found one of Ruth Berlsheimer's nephews who still lives in, the, in, in Illinois and um, interviewed him uh, about his aunt Ruth and he tells a lot of interesting stories that she was a brilliant woman quite smart. Again, she graduated in 1908 with a degree in chemistry, so uh, I'm not surprised to hear that she was a smart person, uh, but he said she was uh, a difficult personality, however. Never married, had no children, and um, uh, often fought with her sister throughout her life uh, over money issues and uh, the nephew said oh and by the way not a great cook uh, that was not her strength was not cooking but rather her strength was in editing and managing um, and the business side of putting a cookbook together uh, uh, so uh, just a little backstory on Ruth um, because her name is so synonymous with these cookbooks. Now here's one, uh, uh, a light green, the American Women's Cookbook. This is 1951. Again, still using the same color photos on the inside of the cover. Uh, and uh, Ruth uh, Berlsheimer was still director. They're still crediting the delineator here. Um, but I do love these illustrations that they have about fry. Here's, here's you know, how to deep fry foods and how to use shortening and oil. Uh, it, it is very instructive. And again, there is just thousands of recipes in this book. Yorkshire pudding, filet mignon, I'm in the meat section, uh, broiled steak, stuffed breast of veal, um, veal fricassee, rabbit, uh, rabbit pie, roast squirrels, um, vegetarian dishes, baked bean roast, lima bean roast, peanut roast, corn oysters, cucumber cups, and like I said, beautiful, beautiful um, photographs. And then here is a little larger version. This is the only one I have with a jacket, with the paper jacket on it. And this was published much later. This was actually from 1972. And this was published by Doubleday um, an American Women's Cookbook, new revised edition, hundreds of photographs to help you be a better cook and hostess by showing you how to carve properly, use a pastry tube, bone and roll a turkey, decorate and frost cookies, broil bacon flat, serve a buffet supper, and many other invaluable skills. So, um, uh, it does have an updated uh, cover and it shows a very modern here. You can see very of its time, 19, early 70s. 
Um, so it was updated. Of course, Ruth uh, Berlsheimer was, was gone by then. She passed away in 1965. Uh, she was born in 1886 and passed in 1965. But the, um, the cookbook was still going strong. Something that kind of is a companion and a um, auxiliary to the cookbooks, the Culinary Arts Institute had an interesting marketing idea. So they had all these recipes in the book and they started breaking the recipes down into little booklets like this. 250 ways to serve fresh vegetables. And on the inside cover, this is from 1940. Consolidated Book Publishers, Chicago, Illinois. Um, they took recipes that were in the cookbook and reprinted them in a sort of a little pamphlet um, or small magazine style and sold these. And these were available in um, bookstores and also in grocery stores and things like that. And a lot of the, re the recipes and the photographs are coming right out of the cookbooks themselves. And it says here, published by the Culinary Arts Institute, one of America's foremost organizations devoted to the science of better cookery. And I don't know if you can see there, the bottom is sort of the culinary, and it's on the cover too, the Culinary Arts Institute logo. So this is 1940, and here it is again, 1951, edited by Ruth Berlsheimer. So Ruth Berlsheimer is still in on it. This is the same thing, 10 years later. New cover, a little bit more, you know, in color, interesting. Um, but another way to sell these recipes, again, uh, and in a handy way, if you didn't have the, the cookbook or you were just looking for something, again, uh, specific, like 1940, salads, 500 delicious salads. Here's 500 delicious salads 10 years later. 300 ways to serve eggs. Here it is again, 10 years later. Same, uh, same thing on the inside. Just an updated cover. 2,000 useful facts about food. Again, that's another one that they updated later on. But Ruth Berlsheimer has her name on all of these. Here's some, I'm going to set this down because the cover is sort of shot, but these are all from the Culinary Arts Institute, publishers of American Woman's Cookbook and really recipes lifted from the cookbook. There are a few here and there that aren't in the cookbook, but most of them are. Elegant desserts. 250 cakes, 250 ways to prepare poultry and game birds, 500 tasty sandwiches. Again, he had 10,000 recipes in these books, so you know you could really do all kinds of stuff here with these with these smaller magazines. 250 ways to make candy, 300 healthful dairy dishes. 500 tasty sandwiches, 500 tasty snacks, 250 sauces, gravies, and dressings, what? 250 refrigerator desserts, 250 superb pies and pastries, 250 ways to prepare meat, 250 fish and seafood recipes, 
dessert recipes, 250 cake recipes, breads, biscuits, and rolls. And I will say, I have made not nearly, you know, the 250, but I've made a lot of them. And, and their recipes are generally pretty good. Um, then, if you didn't want to just buy all the little books individually, you could get this. Again, from Ruth Berlsheimer and the um, Culinary Arts Institute. This is the Encyclopedia of Cooking. I think somebody asked me if I had one of these, and I do. It's in rough shape. The binder is, the cover is um, broken off. But basically, it's a binder that holds all of the, the ser series of all of these little books in one place. And so, 24 volumes. And there it is. So, that's, this is all part of the American Women's Cook, Woman's Cookbook and the influence of Ruth Berlsheimer on what was coming out um, of the Culinary Arts Institute at that time. Now, uh, sometime in the 1950s, Ruth retired. She moved to California. Um, in her retirement. And another uh, person, and her name was Melanie de Proft. She became director of the Culinary Arts Institute. And this is um, one of the books from that era. It's called Women's World Cookbook. This was a pretty fairly popular book. Um, I don't know how many recipes are in here, quite a few. America's best prized recipes tested in the kitchens of the Culinary Arts Institute. Um, uh, th there's a couple thousand recipes in this book too, I'm quite sure. Um, and so she also took over, Melanie DeProft, she also took over these books. So 1940, 1941, 1950, Ruth was putting out those books and then in the late 50s and even into the early 60s, Melanie de Proft from the Culinary Arts Institute was putting out books and they were like this, the French cookbook. Um, let's see, what did I do with the other ones, hold on, I have a bunch of them here, from her era, here we go. The Hungarian cookbook, the Creole cookbook, the Italian cookbook, the French cookbook, Hungarian, cooling dishes for hot weather. Elegant Desserts, the, cas uh, the Chocolate Cookbook, I'm sorry, the Ground Meat Cookbook, um, Entertaining for Six or Eight, Cakes and Torts, the Casserole Cookbook, oh, you gotta love this one, the Sour Cream, Cooking with Sour Cream and Buttermilk. Yeah, anything in this book is good. And then you have the Gourmet Foods Cookbook. So it carried on the tradition. At some point, the Culinary Arts Institute sort of ceased to exist as an entity, uh, and they stopped publishing these books. Um, and as is the case, one publisher bought out the other publisher, and things like that, but um, these definitely made an impression. And if you don't have uh, or don't recall seeing an American woman's cookbook, I bet if you are over a certain age, you have seen 
these um, little pamphlets. Uh, Good Housekeeping put these out as well. They found great success with these. Pillsbury, Betty Crocker, they all got into this. But these were pretty early on. Um, this was a, a really interesting concept in a way to sort of um, re-engage recipes that you already had in a new way to a new audience. And you know, these sold for, gosh, I don't know how much, I don't know what the retail price is, they're not on here, but you know, these, these were probably 25 cents or something like that. Anyways, so another great cookbook, uh, part of uh, the Cavalcade Cookbook Library. Certainly, both the books and these little soft cover pamphlets. Um, Ruth Berlsheimer, uh, a prominent figure in American cookery. Uh, even if she wasn't a great cook herself, she knew how to edit and market and put together cookbooks and, and cooking guides for people. Uh, certainly a strength of hers. And um, I will continue with the series. I know that we have had, uh, I have had requests from you for a number of other cookbooks. Things that are in the future here, we'll do the Good Housekeeping Cookbook. Uh, we will do um, McCall's. Um, someone wanted the Settlement Cookbook. I have a few of those. And, um, oh, I'm forgetting some. Believe me, there's a lot of cookbooks to go through. It's going to take <laughs> It's going to take a while, but that's okay. It's fun. And so, anyways, I will remind you of the website, cavalcadeoffood.com. And I thank you for spending time with me for this installment of the cookbook series. And I hope you all are warm and well. And I will see you again real soon back here on Cavalcade of Food. Until then, bye everybody.